Vsauce! I'm Jake, and our vertebral column, our backbone, our spine is incredibly important. It's what protects the spinal cord, that pack of nervous tissue that connects to the brain to create the central nervous system. It's what keeps us from being spineless, so we can stand up for ourselves, hold our heads up high, and not cower. Or, as things like Mortal Kombat and Predator have taught me, the spine is a thing that you can rip out of someone in an incredibly easy and clean way. Which got me thinking, could you rip out a person's spine? Let me start off by saying that you could not tear someone's spine out like they do in Mortal Kombat. In the game, the severe spine removal seems to be done one-handed by grabbing the victim by the neck and then pulling up. This would just lift the person off the ground by their head and be kind of awkward. <gasps> oh, no, not me! The stunt guy's over there! The stunt guy's over there! <laughs> I'm not sure why we needed so many close-ups. That was kind of weird. So let's figure out how we could pull one spine out of their body in a single go. You'd have to use one hand to hold the person down while using your other hand, your murder hand, murder hand! to apply an enormous amount of upward force to the neck. Now, if you apply between 5,000 and 15,000 newtons of force, but this is just a demonstration! The head would just pop off. Now, if we were to detach the head without exceeding 5,000 newtons of force, then we could possibly pull out some of the spine. But it would be very messy. You know, the spine just isn't some clean, connected pieces of bone. Our vertebrae are attached to a lot of muscles inside our body, and some large sections like the pelvis and rib cage. You know, let's go through them individually. The lamina, the rear part of the spine, is connected to the back muscles via tendons. It would take around one million newtons of force, the force equivalent of 10 high-speed car crashes, to break them all simultaneously. Instead, during a spine rip attempt, the muscles of the back would stretch and come out of the body with the spine. And remember, during this process, your spine is still attached to your ribs and pelvis. So what would happen to those? The spine detaches from the pelvis immediately and starts to come out. But the victim's torso is horribly mutilated in the process. The ribs snap off at the spine and their connecting muscles also detach. Shoulders could even dislocate and the arms may remain attached to the back muscles. To actually get a clean break from the spine and all that's attached to it, you'd have to pull pretty far because the muscles can extend quite a bit. So it kind of looked like a muscle and tendon rainbow. Pretty gruesome, but let's imagine our ideal spine ripping scenario where the spine is firmly connected to the skull and disconnected from all those tendons and ligaments. What would that look like? Well, initially it would look a lot like Mortal Kombat or Predator, and then it would get a whole lot worse. How much worse? Well, we built a machine to show us just that. So even with the spine reinforced to the head, the ligaments and tendons and rib cage disconnected, we were still only able to get eight pieces of vertebrae out, which is still really impressive and, as we can see, incredibly deadly. But if anything, it shows that, you know what? To survive this, you don't need a spine to be brave. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. Hi there. I'd like to thank AMC and Into the Badlands for allowing me to partially rip out a person's 
spine. It was fantastic. And if you like this kind of stuff, and if you like insane martial arts, you should definitely check out the trailer for Into the Badlands. It's amazing, and hey, so are you. Also, you might have noticed that the steel rod changed from red to nice raw new steel. That's because the first time we did this, this guy was so powerful that it actually bent both steel rods, so we had to get a new reinforced one. It's awesome. I'm gonna go uh, put this guy back together. Bye.